for the part six. This is kind of the part that I was dreading. Um, just because I know how much time I had to spend the last, the other gears getting this, this sticky grease off. Like, it wouldn't come off in the ultrasonic cleaner. I'm using Easy Off. I mean, this stuff, was I had to buff it off Easy Off. It was multiple different cleaners. Yeah, whatever was on there was crazy sticky. So, all right. So, I think this is going to be the, probably the most complicated part of the of the build. The quick change gear post thing here. Can't see. I took the label off. Glad I did because that stuff is corrosive. That Well, it will take the color right off of it. And look at the amount of oilers this thing has. Six oilers. All right, so I do have a diagram of how it's put together. You know, kind of. It doesn't say specifically what. Or it just kind of shows a picture. But look at this. It's so caked, you can't even move it. Um, and I got to all this dip this stuff in my ultrasonic. Is I'm, I just, it's, uh, it's kind of a bad one. How oily this stuff is. It says... Oh, this might be too big. Let's try one actually. Take these collars off. All right, and then it looks like it has like I'm gonna get that off. I don't know. I think I'm gonna have to take that snapping off. That that basically keeps them so you can't go all the way over. You know, and like it will um, prevent this from sliding into the other gear set. All right, so eh, I don't think I'll, I'll, I'll probably want mill flats. Kind of like how I did the other one, the main shaft, I, I milled flats in there. All right. Yeah, I'm gonna try to keep these in individual sections because there's so many gears. Yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> trying to keep them organized. Um, yeah, that, like I said, the stuff is, my hands are so dry because I've been working on this thing for a couple weeks now. I've had to wash my hands a gazillion times. So I have like no like moisture left in my skin. Um, all right, so like I said, I'm gonna keep these in individual sections. I'm gonna probably just ultrasonic clean them, you know, just to get the initial grease off, man. It's horrible. And whoever designed this is a freaking smart dude. Um, yeah, because I mean, I design all kinds of stuff. I just know this is freaking complicated. Well, how do you like this? You got. <clears throat> adjustment color, adjustment color, adjustment color, adjustment color, adjustment color, adjustment color. Adrian's, it was supposed to be a snap ring right there, but uh, there was no snap ring there. I mean, I look at the diagram. So it was missing the snap ring. It was sitting anywhere. So I have extra snap rings. Um, yes, yeah, so it wasn't really being held in there by anything. Well, I mean, it was, I mean, it could have walked back, but. All right. I have a winter I'm using. I'm using Easy Off oven cleaner just because the air stuff is just too ridiculous or it's, it's too sticky. I'm putting everything back together. <coughs> I still got to buff. I'm making everything super shiny. Got to buff that out. Um, got these things painted. So, yeah, this is the most complicated part. I mean, it's not super complicated. Um, these gets, I think they're called gets oilers. Uh, you got to check these things. These things are completely clogged. So I don't think this thing was even getting oils. I noticed that some of the, no, I don't know so much on this shaft. I'm gonna probably buff off, you know, get some emery cloth and smooth it out a little bit. But I, I can tell some of the shafts weren't getting oil, you know. Well, these were completely clogged with, with that weird cake grease that's in here, you know, that sticky cake grease. So I gotta get those clean, free. One came off pretty good though. Just pop right out. Whereas I don't know if they're pressed in or, you know. I don't want to pull it out if it's pressed in. So I'm going to use some brake clean, get that stuff cleaned out as much as I can. So here's another example of a shaft um, that you can tell kind of got overheated and not lubricated. So, yeah, look how, I don't know if you can see the light on here. But yeah, these things are like totally clogged, you know? Um, so I'm going to do some brake cleaning in there, too. I, mean, I, I even soaked this, too, in ultrasonic cleaner. But, um, yeah, look at that. You can see all the, the wear on it, you know? Um, so I'm going to hit that with some emery cloth on my lathe. Smooth it out as much as I can. Probably going to be losing some tolerance, but 
you know, it's better than having that rough edge. I should probably check the bushing too. But yeah, I'm assuming all these things were clogged up, all the oiling passages. All right, sorry for the background noise. Uh, so I'm putting the gearbox together and I've already sanded all the, or am I cloth, all the stuff in my lathe. Um, you could do that with just like a drill or something like that too. Uh, but, the, but the main thing is I didn't, I couldn't, I didn't want to sand it down so much where I got completely all the ridges. I just wanted to get the sharp edges off. But also what's funny is those grooves would actually even um, act as like an oil holder. So yeah, I just wanted to get the sharp edges off. But if you take off too much, too material, you're going to have too much play in the shaft. Well, I have this big massive screen here for this specific purpose. I can actually look at diagrams on a really big screen while I'm actually putting stuff back together right here on my workbench. Alright, it's a gearbox put back together. Gears all cleaned. It's all aligned. You know, if I wouldn't have taken pictures of this thing, uh, or like video, um, even though I'm actually looking at the diagram, right? But the diagram's kind of hard to follow sometimes. It's like not... You can't... It doesn't show you how it's put back together. It shows you what the order is supposed to be, but it doesn't show how they line up here. Like where the collars are at, how their collars are adjusted. So the fact that I took a video of this thing before I took it apart, you know, making this video, um, made it... It's, you know, there's a couple tight spots here and there, but um, I'm just looking at gears, see if there's anything stuck in the gears, maybe now still. But yeah, I spent uh, many, many hours. A couple of the teeth seemed like they were like uh, some some rough spots, maybe like some a chip had gotten in them, you know. Overall, they look pretty good. So I think I just got to run these in and kind of get them broken in a little bit. Um, but everything slides. You know, it's hard with one hand, but everything goes into, it's hard, like I said, it's, you get these damn things lined up, there we go, and that's how that works, you know, the gears. All right, so I gotta put this thing back on. I live in the busiest corner, cars going by all along. Um, three sweepers, I right, got this back on. I mean, I don't know if you guys saw at the beginning of this video where I got this, brought this thing home. You, I mean, this thing was so caked with grease that it was like this sticky grease. So, I mean, I saw some other guy online use like stick, super sticky motor honey. Man, but I, I don't ever want, I mean, I, I, I don't know what this guy put on here, but um, horrible. So I got to put the gets oilers back on, but I've already oiled them up pretty good. So I'm going to run this for a couple minutes. Um, actually, I'll put them back on first before I run them. But, all right. And if you got your finger caught in there when this thing's running, it's freaking game over. Or if like, like you had like your your, your uh, sweatshirt, you know, your little string come by and get caught up in this thing. God, this would destroy you. All right. I'm not even sure why I'm calling him Get Toiler. I think I saw, I heard some other guy online say Get Toiler, like an old dude, Mr. Pete. Um, he actually, he has a lot of videos about this lathe. Um, yeah, I thought he said it was called a Gitz Oiler. Like in the catalog, it just says Oiler, but I'm not sure if that's like an old term or something. Um, yeah, these things were completely clogged up. So these things, all these shafts weren't even getting looped. Like at least a couple of them were completely clogged up. So, all right, put them on the air compressor, ultrasonic clean them. Like I probably got eight hours in this, probably just the gearbox. You know, scrubbing all these gears, you know, by hand, you know, oven cleaner. Like, even my, my ultrasonic cleaner wouldn't even get the oil off. All right, let's fire this thing up. Um, make sure nothing's jammed, nothing's locked in there. All right, and I, I just want to see if it actually turns on first. Sorry, I'm oil going everywhere. Now, I, I really lift these up the first time to kind of help them break in. All right, well, here it goes. I think I've got about 100 RPM. Let's do this by hand first and see what happens. Yeah, I haven't run this yet, so if it blows up, you're going to see it on video. That's the output that's going to run the shaft. All right, well, here goes nothing. I'll make sure I turn it off real fast, but it jams up. I'm definitely going to 3D print some gears. 
or the fire from here. too much oil than not enough oil on the first go while it's breaking itself in. Alright, let's try that again. Fire in that direction. Okay, oh guys, cool. That's how I did the gearbox. Yeah, I'm so glad I made like I said filmed the video because it was you know trying to look at diagrams and figure out in diagrams. So if you are gonna take this thing apart, make sure you take a lot of pictures or look at my video. Um, to know like how what order how they stack on top of each other meaning like these these things were kind of confusing to figure out like the diagram doesn't show how they stack up so i got the I'm almost done with this thing now what else i gotta do gotta do uh the covers so everything's working i put the lead screw back on i'm gonna film that just putting the lead screw on but i've gone through every single part of this thing so